One September, I was out for a stroll in the high country of northern New Mexico when a creamy flash of color caught my eye out among the dark trunks of trees. It was the rump of a young calf elk, a little male. I crept in closer, watching for cows, the females that would be nearby. The calf was greedily snarfing down on some green grass he'd found in this little clearing. I watched him for a few minutes, catching glimpses of the legs and the sides and the tawny rumps of adult elk that were drifting around in the area. And just as I wondered where this calf's mother was, she called to him. It was calm, inquisitive, just a check-in. He barely flicked his ears and went on tearing away at the grass. A minute passed, and I could imagine her standing there, staring intently in the direction she'd last seen him. Her second call had a different ring, a glimmer of agitation, maybe a flash of concern. Yum, 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 yum. He just went on scarfing away at the grass, completely ignoring her. Even I was starting to get annoyed with him. Come on, dude, your mom is worried about you. She was officially upset. I could hear the gentleness go from her voice. Her call took on a raspy hiss and his head snapped up and he went bounding off to her. The whole thing made me chuckle. I had just witnessed a scenario right out of any parent's typical day and anyone sitting alongside me would have been able to understand that situation. Today, I wanna to take a few minutes to talk about paying attention to what's being said out there by all the other critters. It's something important and incredibly useful to our relationship with the wild world. As modern humans, we are so caught up in ourselves and in our own little worlds that most of us go about life thinking that animals make random noises or that their communications are beyond our comprehension. And some of them are, but there's more universality in vocalizations than we might think. Listening and learning from the calls of animals is a basic life skill, and it was always advantageous for humans to pay attention. The British hunter Jim Corbett pointed this out more than a century ago. He grew up in the jungles of India and rose to fame in the early 1900s for his ability to hunt down man-eating tigers. He was an incredible woodsman, and he absolutely loved tigers and all of the other critters of the wilds that he was raised in. He often said that one would always know what was happening in the jungle, whether a tiger was on the prowl or a group of travelers were passing through, because the animals would tell you. He wrote, all birds and all animals have their own language, and though, with few exceptions, one species cannot speak the language of another species, all the jungle folk understand each other's language. When we start listening, there is a world of information we can glean. The more familiar we are with birds and other wildlife, the better. But we don't need to be able to identify birds by ear or know all the sounds that wild animals make. We just need to change what we listen for and what we observe. Birds are great to focus on because like us, they are super vocal. And because they're so vocal, they're very keen listeners. A lot of folks get very good at deciphering bird language, studying how birds respond differently to particular predators or how alarms reverberate through a forest. But let's keep it simple and start with the essentials. What's important and so gratifying is that we can quickly learn to recognize what's happening in the woods around us. All the other animals do it, so why not us? First, birds don't make noise without a reason. There's something being conveyed in each vocalization. To understand what that is, we'll want to focus on two things. In the auditory realm, we want to pay attention to the inflection of each vocalization we hear. The other thing we want to pay attention to is body language. Imagine seeing a friend or a spouse moving around the kitchen, singing to themselves as they make a cup of coffee or put the dishes away. And now, Imagine that same person sitting at the computer, cursing at the screen because the time-sensitive documents that they're uploading keep freezing and they keep getting taken back to the start page. We don't need to understand the words that person is saying. They could be speaking an entirely different language. We know everything we need to from the difference in their voice as it goes from relaxed to agitated. 
And we can see the change in their body too, the tension. We can feel all of it. In the same way, we can pay careful attention to the inflection and the body language of other animals around us, especially birds. Begin to focus on how they sound, on how they look, and where their attention is. Picture a bird feeding on the ground or picking seeds from a feeder. The calls they make to each other are mellow and chattery. They are alert and vigilant, but their bodies are relaxed. Life is good. And now, imagine that a cat has skulked onto the scene. The birds take notice. Their calls take on a harsher tone. And after hearing the calls and the alarms of others, birds that haven't seen the cat will also go into full alert. Their bodies tense up. They'll start stretching their necks out to get a better view, and they'll hop rigidly from branch to branch with palpable agitation. Some might also flick their tails, their whole bodies pumping with each alarm call. The point is, it's much easier to see and hear animals telling us that something is not right or that everything is good than most of us think it is. Understanding the language of animals isn't woo-woo or just some cheesy anthropomorphizing. It's a practical skill that's useful in wild places, can even save your life. I'll give you an example. I am a senior tracker and an international evaluator with Cyber Tracker Conservation, a global organization that originated in South Africa to train and assess the skills of professional wildlife trackers. One part of the assessment process is to evaluate how well a tracker follows a set of tracks with the intention of finding the animal that made them, but without alerting the animal to his or her presence. If the tracker misses bird alarms or the alarms of other animals, points are docked from their score, and they might even be taken off the trail. Why? Well, because in South Africa and in some places in the United States, missing those signals can result in us walking right smack into the back end of a dangerous animal. But we don't need the presence of danger for this practice to be so rewarding. Being alert and aware and tuned in helps us learn more about what's happening in the woods around us. We might know that there's a predator around, like a bobcat or an owl or a snake. And being tuned in enables us to know when we're causing a disturbance and helps us avoid disrupting the woods. Listening requires us to stop and check in, which gives us an immediate feel for where we are. And tuning into all the voices out there creates in us a deep sense of connection to place. Think about it this way. Each landscape has a unique soundscape that broadcasts a symphony of information about the living world. And soundscape ecology is the study of how living organisms interrelate acoustically with each other and with their environment. Bernie Krauss, the father of soundscape ecology and an expert at recording natural soundscapes, made incredible contributions to our understanding of ecosystems this way. He began to point out in the 1960s that one of the best ways to get to know a place is to listen to it. He spent the better part of his life recording and studying more than 1,300 habitats. He said, careful listening gives us incredibly valuable tools by which to evaluate the health of a habitat across the entire spectrum of life. So over the next few days, your field assignment is to stop and listen. Pay attention to the sounds around you at different times of day and night. What is the soundscape of your home turf, regardless of whether you live in a city or way out in the woods? And listen to birds and watch them. Listen for inflection, study their body language. You'll start to notice all sorts of behaviors relaxed birds bathing or preening, young birds fluttering their wings as they beg for food from their parents, or upset birds yelling at intruders. Soak it all up and foster this practice so that no matter where you are, a little part of your brain is always tuned to listening to what the birds are saying about life in a forest or in a park or along city streets. We are not alone in this world. It's bigger than us. And when we turn our attention to the voices of the others, we learn to listen to a universal language. There is a lot being said out there.